All right, for these three limit problems, this is all just practice from our last lesson. So as you take a look at these, we can actually know our answers just by deciding first if it's top heavy, bottom heavy, or balanced. And that's all based on the degree of the top and the bottom. So on the top of this first one, our degree is 1. On the bottom of this first one, our degree is 2. That means it is bottom heavy. Whenever it is bottom heavy, we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals what? Zero. zero. Yep. Every single time we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero when it is bottom heavy like that. By the way, if you have trouble remembering that, just think of a really simple bottom heavy rational like 1 over x and think about where is the asymptote of that. And that can help remind you what it is, just if you have trouble remembering it. All right. And so if the asymptote's at y equals zero, what is our limit as x approaches negative infinity? Zero. It's got to be the same thing. So that limit equals zero. So knowing where the asymptote is just allows us to figure out then what's the limit as we approach negative infinity or infinity. All right, so for the second one then, same kind of an idea. In this case, it is balanced because the highest exponent terms are both squares. Top and bottom have the same degree. So since it is balanced, that means I have to do the a over b thing. So a being the coefficient of that highest degree term, so then that's the 3 on the top. And then on the bottom, that coefficient's a 1, and so it's 3 over 1, or in other words, the limit as x approaches infinity equals 3, because that's where the horizontal asymptote is. All right, and then for this last one, Notice it's top-heavy. And since it is top-heavy, it doesn't have a horizontal asymptote. And so every time it's top-heavy, it does not have a horizontal asymptote. And yet, there is a limit as x approaches infinity here. And so in order to figure that out, we again look at those two terms, and we go ahead and simplify that. So that would simplify down to be x squared over x is just x. What's the limit as x approaches infinity of x? Infinity. And so the limit as x approaches infinity of that fraction is infinity. So basically just simplify those two highest degree terms that on the top and the bottom. And then that can tell you what our end behavior is and therefore what our limit is. Now yesterday I just gave you the rule saying that when it's top heavy, we do this. When it's bottom heavy, we do that, and so on. I want you to see why some of these things work the way they do. And so we're going to be seeing how to actually simplify one of these things algebraically. So please write down this problem. And then we're going to be writing out a lot of steps here to show how could we do this algebraically. And we're going to do a little bit of trickery here a little bit of manipulating things because if I want to find the limit as x approaches infinity first up my limit rules tell me that I could then find the limit as x approaches infinity of each of these individual terms and then each of these individual terms and then I could actually find the limit from that information and so I'm going to be working based on that idea except I'm going to be doing one other little tweak with it all right, on the top, actually let's just carry through the limit as x approaches infinity. On the top, I'm going to take that 3x squared, that is specifically the term with the highest exponent, and I'm going to factor that out of every term on the top. Which means that 3x squared divided by 3x squared gives me 1 minus, now it's the x over 3x squared and then minus 6 over 3x squared. This is certainly not factoring like you normally do, right? Normally we don't want to factor something out unless I can actually pull it out of every term. But in this case, I'm going ahead and factoring it out. Notice that if I did multiply this 3x squared back into the parentheses, I would still get what I started with up here. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. 
And the bottom, I look for the biggest exponent term. That's the x squared. So it's x squared, and then parentheses, factor it out of every term. 1 plus x over x squared minus 6 over x squared. Why do I want to do that? Because now I can use those limit rules that say I can take the limits of everything individually. In other words, this can become the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x squared times the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 minus the limit as x approaches infinity of x over 3x squared. This is usually the point where somebody starts looking at it going, oh my gosh, what are you doing to me? Because this looks insanely complicated, right? And, you know, in some ways it is, insofar as if we were actually trying to just, like, do other operations on this, pretty much anything other than limits, this would be a somewhat foolish thing to do because we're making it into something that looks so much more complicated. But, as you're going to see, there is a point in purpose. Now we do the same thing on the bottom. We, in order to find the limit of the whole bottom, I'm going to find the limit of everything individually. So that's the limit of x squared times the limit of each of the individual terms inside the parentheses. And so then that's what we end up with. So we've now broken it down to where we're finding a whole bunch of individual limits. Now why would we do this? Because it now allows us to do quite a bit. All right, next line. The limits of the stuff I factored out are just going to stay as they were. Limit as x approaches infinity of 3x squared parentheses. Now we start to see what we can actually do with this and manipulating it. So move it up, make some more room. What is the limit as x approaches infinity of 1? One? 1. Because the limit as x approaches anything of a constant is whatever the constant is. So that just ends up giving me 1. Okay, now minus. What is the limit as x approaches infinity of x over x squared? 0. Because it's bottom heavy. Okay, so then that gives me 0 minus, now I need to find the limit as x approaches infinity of 6 over 3x squared. What would that limit give me? 0. zero. That's the top now. And now hopefully it is starting to become clear why we're doing this crazy little step we're doing. Because we're getting lots of 1s and zeros, and 1s and zeros always make things easier to work with. All right, we repeat the process on the bottom here. And then inside there, the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 is 1. The limit of that fraction in the middle is 0. And then the limit of the last fraction on the bottom is 0. And so this whole thing just ends up boiling down to be the limit as x approaches zero or x approaches infinity of 3x squared over the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared. All right, and then the last thing, why would we like that limit? Because I don't want to just find that limit on the top and limit on the bottom, but end up like infinity over infinity. That is then the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x squared over x squared. So notice that by doing that work, we just proved that I didn't have to worry about any of the terms other than that one term with the highest exponent on it. And then if I do want to find that limit, well, notice I can then simplify that. So I end up working with the limit as x approaches infinity. If I simplify that fraction, I just get 3. And so that's why the whole thing equals 3. That's why our rules work the way they do that we got. 
And so now we're going to use this problem as another example, just because I want to show you what happens with some square root stuff. Because we're going to be seeing square roots like this, where that's part of a fraction, and we have a rational with more x's involved. And we're going to need to know what is the degree on the top and what's the degree on the bottom, so that we can know what those terms are that we're working with. Now, what do you suppose the degree of this whole thing would give me? Or actually, I should say this whole thing. What's the degree of that? Now, some of you are looking at it like, what? And others of you are saying 5. And 5 is correct, yes. Because basically, this is going to end up just working out where all I really care about is a 2x to the 5th when it comes to finding the limits. But why? And so I want to again show you how we can use that algebraic technique to get us there. And so, first thing I want to do is I just want to factor out that biggest term on the inside. So, that's going to give me the limit as x approaches infinity. So I'm not doing anything with the limit yet. I'm just going to be modifying the inside of the square root. 4x to the 10th, and I'm factoring that of all of the terms inside. So that gives me 1 plus 6x to the 7th over... 4x to the 10th, and yes, I could simplify and reduce that fraction a bit, but I don't want to worry about it right now. You certainly are welcome to. I just want to make it clear where everything is coming from. And so all I've done is factor out that one term that has the biggest exponent. Now, having done that, I'm going to do one more little move here. This becomes the limit as x approaches infinity. So again, I'm not touching the limit part yet. I'm just modifying the square root. And I'm going to turn this into the square root of 4x to the 10th times the square root of 1 plus 6x to the 7th and so on. because now I can use that limit rule. And actually, actually, before I even do that, I can simplify something here, can't I? You see what we can simplify? That 4x to the 10th. It's inside the square root. I can take the square root of that. So let's go ahead and do that. And now I am showing every little step here when you do this. You'll do a couple of these steps combined. At least most of you will. And so the square root of 4x to the 10th ends up giving me 2x to the 5th. All right, so already I was able to simplify it. So now we just need a point and purpose to doing that simplifying to see why would that make our lives any easier. And that's now where the limit can come in because then... This can become the limit as x approaches infinity of the 2x to the 5th times the square root of the limit. And so again, we're just taking each of those individual limits on the inside because we can do that. So we're using those old limit rules that we saw like three, four lessons ago. All right, and so since it gives us all those individual limits, this then is the limit as x approaches infinity of the 2x to the fifth. And inside the square root, the limit is we, from x to infinity of 1 is 1. Plus, that limit is 0. Plus, that limit is 0. Just showing how can we know that it is what it is. Well, the 1 plus 0 is plus 0 is 0. I'm sorry, 1. And the square root of 1 is 1. So the whole thing boils down to the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x to the fifth. And so that is all we're working with. So that's why, yes, we can just take the square root of that biggest term in order to know what's the coefficient, what's the degree, and all that kind of stuff. Because everything else, when we do the limit, everything else is approaching zero. And so it's not going to end up changing anything. All right, and then we could then figure out what is that limit. Well, this is the limit of a 
polynomial now. Degree 5, which has n behavior of going down then up. Since this is looking at positive infinity, it, my limit would equal infinity because it's going up as we go to the right. All right, last up. These problems are the last ones we're going to do together here. These are going to be following up on some of the stuff we were just using. And so for that first one, when we do that algebraic work and factor out, on the top I'm factoring out a negative x squared. You could have also factored out a positive x squared, but if you did, this would end up being a minus on the inside here, and that will end up changing that a little bit. And so then we can find each of those limits. Of course, we end up with a lot of zeros and ones inside the parentheses, so the parentheses inside all just end up becoming one. And so we end up looking at the limit as x approaches infinity, of negative x squared oops, over x cubed, which, of course, is the limit as x approaches infinity, if we simplify that, of negative 1 over x. And we can know the limit of that. The limit of that ends up being 0. And again, that's the long way to do it. It's a long way to have to do the work. But we do need that ability because it does show us why we can do some of the things we can do. All right, for the last two, go ahead and just solve them out any old way you wish. Find those limits. All right, so on the second one, uh, the first thing you need to do is you need to actually go through and multiply all that out so that we can see what the degrees are and what the coefficients are on those terms. And as we've seen, everything after that line ends up being irrelevant to the limit. And so we're just looking at the stuff on the left of that line, which is the 9x to the 4th over 2x to the 4th. Well, notice it's balanced on top and bottom. And so that means that in order to find that limit, I take the coefficient on the top, which is 9, and I put it over the coefficient on the bottom, which is 2. All right, and finally for that bottom one, we just went through that whole process of showing that square root thing, partly so that when you saw this problem, you wouldn't get too thrown off, because I know that in finding this limit then, I'm really going to be finding the limit as x approaches infinity here of 3x cubed over 2x cubed. That's really what this whole thing's going to boil down to. Now, why? Because on the top, Remember, anything after that biggest term is going to end up being irrelevant. So really, I'm just simplifying the square root of 9x to the 6. So the square root of 9 gives me the 3 here. And then the square root of x to the 6 is x cubed, because square rooting basically cuts your exponent in half, because it's the same as to the power of 1 half. And then we end up looking at the bottom as well. And again, only that first term, that term with the biggest exponent on it, that's the only one that's going to end up affecting anything as we've seen. And so we can now go ahead and say the limit as x approaches infinity. Well, we already know the rule, but just to see why, that ends up giving us the limit as x approaches infinity of three halves, because those x cubes cancel each other out. So that's why that whole thing ends up just equaling three halves.